when heart stops beating, life ends. You all agree? Yes. But just imagine, I stop a beating heart, <clears throat> remove that heart from the body, pack it in an ice box, shift it to or transfer it from Bhavnagar to Ahmedabad, implant it in another body, and heart starts beating. A new life starts. Isn't it amazing? Already it's an out-of-world experience. But let me tell you, that is what is the amazing story about organ transplantation and organ donation. My dear friends, I am Dr. Diren Shah. My friends call me a romantic surgeon because I have touched a lot of hearts. <laughs> My colleagues tell me you are a devotional guru or you are a you are an inspirational guru because you change hearts. <laughs> I do everything, but I am none of them. I am basically a cardiac surgeon. I am a heart transplant surgeon working in Ahmedabad. My journey of cardiac surgeon or heart surgeon started the day when I was born. My father said, "Mera beta doctor banega." <laughs> And probably I don't know, that might have seeded something in my subconscious mind and somehow I tried, I was hating mathematics in my school days. So I was left with no other choice but to be a doctor. As a child, I was a very introvert, introverted child, imaginative child, sitting in a corner from a small town, Gandhidam Kach, in a pre-Google era. So, and unfortunately in our families, we had a lot of cardiac patients, heart patients in our family. So they used to get treatment, they used to get uh, surgeries done, and they used to talk about heart surgeries. They used to talk about the heart surgeons. And whenever they used to talk about heart surgeons, they used to glorify like anything. Here I am there, standing in front of you, being a cardiac surgeon, with the 20 years of practice behind me. After performing thousands of surgeries, I have performed now more than 12 to 13,000 open heart surgeries, done almost complex, uh, complex surgeries also, established a lot of new things. One day, with that mindset, I was doing my OPDs. A young child, a young gentleman, 21 years old, came in my OPD. He was real breathless, he was edematous all over the body, unable to do his routine activities also, that is what he told his on his uh, history, he's unable to do. He is unable to even sleep also for more than two hours because once he sleeps down, he gets breathless and he has to sit down. His parents touched my feet and said, "Sir, we have heard uh, we have heard a lot of about you. Please save my child. He is the only child. You are my God." You are our God. Please save him. With 15 years of practice and well with the best infrastructure that I was working around, with the best team of doctors around with me in my team, I was unable to save that child. Why? Because the best bet for that child was to have a heart transplantation. And unfortunately, the heart transplantation program was not available in Gujarat. In that is what I'm talking about is in 2014, and hardly there were any centers available in Gujarat, in India. Also, two or three centers were available in India who were doing heart transplantation at that point of time. So I think so. That was a triggering point. That was a tipping point for me. I need to do something, and I have always always realized every people. Every event that comes in front of you is always with some purpose. It is always up to you how you choose it and how you do it with that. So I decided, okay, let us take this challenge of establishing a heart transplantation program in the state of Gujarat. Heart transplantation, let me tell you, is not just surgery. 
everybody feel it's a surgery, but it is not surgery. It is basically a whole process. It is, I would compare it with a startup. When you are starting some program or any a company, you need to do everything. So for heart transplantation, you need to do research, you need to do reading, you need to do paperwork, you need to get licensing, you need to get the machineries established, you need to have an infrastructure developed, you need to have a pool of good intellectual doctors together so that you can get the best results out of that. And in spite of my busy practice, in 2014, I took time out and with my colleagues, Dr. Milan Chug and Dr. Chintan Shed, we went to US for a month's period just to observe how these people are doing heart transplantation in US. What is their protocol? What is their flawless system doing there? And we try to get all that thing over here in Ahmedabad, establish that whole system in Ahmedabad at our own hospital. And then we were waiting for an organ. That is on Sunday evening, I was 6.30 around, I was sitting with my friend chatting. I got a call from Bhavnagar. An uh, NGO uh, called up, there is a probable brain dead patient there in Bhavnagar. And their parents have agreed upon for an organ donation. That young man was just 32 year old Asif Juneja, who had a road traffic accident, had a severe brain injury and irrecoverable brain damage. So he was declared basically brain dead. But their family agreed upon that. Okay, we want to donate the organ. And fortunately, at that particular time, at my own hospital, one patient was already admitted, Mr. Arjun Bhai from Jamnagar, who had been pumping, heart pumping of just 15%. He was on life support system for almost 15, 20 days. He was on ventilator for 15 days. We had given him almost 150 shocks just to keep his rhythm in a heartbeat in a rhythmic way. We were trying very hard so that we can make him survive and his only best form of treatment would have been heart transplantation. So when I got this call, I consulted the family members of Arjun Bhai. There is an opportunity. Are you ready for heart transplantation? And by God's grace and the full faith in us, they agreed upon, yes, immediately I gathered my team. 6.30 I got a call and by 11 o'clock I had left with my retrieval team to Bhavnagar to retrieve the organ. 2 o'clock I reached at Bhavnagar, I examined the donor, prepared the things. Side by side, let me tell you, whenever there is a call for organ donation, there is a war room like situation because a lot of things need to be coordinated at, at similar point of time because in that stipulated time of almost I would say uh, 8 or 10 hours the whole process of organ donation and transplantation is completed. So within that period you have to coordinate a lot of things. So we reached there, we took the patient in the operation theater, we operated, retrieved the heart. So. We reached here in Ahmedabad, implanted the heart in uh, Arjun Bhai, and after transplanting, the heart started beating. Loved up, loved up, loved up. And that music, that feeling of creation of life or getting back that life is unimaginable. A sense of creation of life is really emotional and very contagious also. And let me tell you, even after doing 13 heart transplantations in last four years, I get the same feeling. 13 heart transplant in just four years? It's a small number. It should be a big number. Let me share you very important data which may highlight certain things. Heart transplantation was performed 50 years back in 1967 and since then in US almost, almost 125,000 heart transplantations have been performed. Whereas in India, last year in February 2020 we, we completed 1000 mark. A huge gap. Is it that we lack the infrastructure? Is it that we lack the intellectual uh, power? Is it that we had uh, no good doctors with us 
or was it something else? And then, another very important fact I would like to share with you. In 2019, just last year, India became number two in transplantation program in the world after the US. 8,000 kidney transplants, 2,000 liver transplants, and 240 heart transplant in one calendar year. That is last year, and it's a proud moment for everybody of us. But when I dig deep into this data, then you realize that there is a shocking things which are coming out. Of all this transplantation that were performed in India, 90 to 95 percent of the transplantation done were by live donation. A mother has given liver or kidney to somebody, a brother has given, or father has given, or somebody has given kidney for their near and dear ones so that they can live normally. Whereas, if you look at these figures, it is of absolutely reverse in the Western and developed countries. And we always feel, why should a family member or near and dear one should part their organ, give to their near and dear ones so that they can live, but at the same time, they will be living with a compromised life. If this can be, uh, this can be sorted out by just simple organ donation, and what I am talking about is the cadaveric organ donation and not the live organ donation. Once the person is brain dead, once the person is dead, then and then it is the matter of donating an organ. Another very important thing is, how to increase this transplantation in India? And it's very simple formula or simple theory or as simple as A, B, C. A stands for awareness and acceptance. B stands for behavioral changes that we need to bring around in the society. And C is compassion and commitment. If this three things or four things are inculcated in our culture, then we can do a great change in this organ donation awareness. How can we create an awareness? Very basic and fundamental question. Everybody should be knowing about what is organ donation. Once they understand what is organ donation, then you discuss it with your family member, discuss it with your friends, your colleagues, your uh, office partners. The more the discussion is there, the better the spread would be. And I am pretty sure if this is done, then it can spread like a wildfire across India. With this change in the perception about organ donation, we can bring out sea change in what we want in India. Let me share you a very good example. It is a real story about the acceptance and awareness, what it can create a change. A female got pregnant. On investigation, she found out that the baby has no brain development. We call it as anencephaly. And what does that mean? Once the child is born, the child is not going to survive for more than few hours. But in spite of that knowledge, that female continued with the pregnancy. With the sole intention, only sole intention. And she knew that okay, my child will not be living till brain is not developed, but rest of the organs are normal. So once he, when the child is born, let him be an organ donor. And let him give life to a lot of other small kids. See, this is the maturity of level of commitment, or I would say awareness and acceptance, which is required in India. And if we can bring that awareness, then definitely it is going to be a magical moment for all India. In Indian culture, the, the uh, importance of Dan has already been inculcated in our own system and own uh, uh, teaching also. We have a lot of importance of, say, Kanyadan or Andan or Gnyandan. Even the Maddan is also very important. <laughs> so, if we know the importance of Dan, then I would say Angdan is the epitome of all this Dan. And I would request the way we teach our small children how to talk and how to walk. 
teach them about organ donation also. And that can make that can be incorporated or that can be culminated into an behavioral changes in the new generation to come. Simple life is just about caring and sharing. Caring and sharing for others. For compassion, you don't need power. For compassion, you don't need uh, the money. What you need is just a commitment for the caring of other fellow human being. If that is there, then definitely you can do what you want and you can make the life better for the other person also or the society or the country. Sankracharya has stated, Idam Shariram Parupkaram. Let this body be used for others. I am a cardiac surgeon and I have seen life and death very closely. Let me tell you, at one point of time patient is alive and within five minutes patient is dead. And I know the very fine line between the mortality and the survival. And the best example is my, I would again uh, illustrate my first heart transplant patient, Arjun Bai, who was on the deathbed. If he had not received an heart from Asif Juneja, probably he would not have seen 2017 also. In future, you may also require an organ for your own survival. So think about that. And as such also, donating is our human nature. We donate books, we donate food, we donate clothes, we donate everything. And we all have experienced that joy and satisfaction whenever we help others or we donate to others. So let us donate organs also. And let me tell you, if we don't donate organs, then we are going to waste that priceless organs which the nature has created and at unfortunately the modern science and technology has not been able to create that thing. So if you waste that organ, that organ is either going to get burnt or buried. It's a big loss for everybody. So I urge you all to pledge for organ donation because by donating organ, you save life, you give life. And that is also after your death and you are maintaining your legacy. This is like being God. I urge you all, you also be all God and donate organs. Thank you.